Throughout history, humanity has faced a vast range of sins. Among them, there is one sin so widespread and seductive that it often goes unnoticed, even as it infiltrates our lives. This sin is not just an isolated act, it is a cunning and powerful force that corrupts our essence. It is considered the most addictive sin in the world, imprisoning those who fall under its dominion. Its mark is present in all eras and civilizations, affecting both the powerful and the humble, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. It has destroyed lives, broken relationships, and torn apart families, being an invisible force behind the collapse of marriages and the fall of nations. Throughout history, nations have risen and fallen under its influence, with history witnessing its devastating power. What makes this sin so addictive is its deceptive nature. Once it sets in, it is relentless, consuming people's thoughts, directing their actions, and determining their destinies. From the beginning of my sermon, can you guess what this sin is? Go ahead, try to guess. Chances are you might both get it right and wrong. This sin is mentioned in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible speaks of a particular sin that easily entangles us. This is the most addictive sin. It may vary from person to person, but it is something that continually tempts an individual and draws them away from God. What God is telling us here is that there is a sin that easily entangles us, ensnares us, trips us up to which we are susceptible. What is that sin for you? Answer silently in your heart today. What is the sin in your life? It may be a secret sin or a public sin that everyone knows, but each person has a sin that easily entangles them. The strange thing about this sin is that it may not affect me as it affects you. The sin that easily entangles one person may be something that people around you do not struggle with, but for you, it is an area of weakness. I like to watch combat sports, and one thing these professional athletes do before a fight is watch recordings of their opponent. This is done to gain details about the opponent's strengths and weaknesses by studying footage of past fights, training sessions, and interviews. They analyze this footage to identify patterns in the opponent's fighting style, such as their preferred techniques, defensive strategies, and tendencies under pressure. They may also identify weaknesses or vulnerabilities the opponent might have, such as a tendency to tire quickly or a susceptibility to certain types of strikes. This information is then used to develop a game plan for the upcoming fight. Fighters and trainers can adapt their training to target the opponent's weaknesses specifically and develop strategies to exploit the opponent's tendencies in the ring. And I believe that's what Satan does with humans. Satan hates you and is determined to exploit and expose your weaknesses. He studies your weaknesses and knows which sin easily entangles you. Satan has a game plan to destroy you. He will never tempt you with something you do not have a propensity to desire. I am not saying you will be tempted to commit only this sin, but the opportunity to commit the sin that easily entangles you will be presented to you much more than other sins. Think for a moment, what is this sin in your life? Be honest with yourself. What is this sin for you? Is it pride? Some people are so full of pride that they are a nightmare to live with. They never admit they are wrong, and it can destroy relationships. God is telling you today to let go of your pride. Save your marriage today and apologize to your spouse. You will have to account on Judgment Day for the pride you are so firmly holding on to. Marriages are falling apart, and one of the reasons is people's pride. God is telling you today to let go of your pride. However, at the same time, some people do not struggle with the problem of pride. They walk in humility, but that is because pride is not the sin that easily entangles them. For you, is it gambling? Gambling addictions are serious. I thank God for never having had problems with gambling, but I have pastored people who did, and I have seen how gambling can dominate a life, how it can take over someone's mind for a grown man to act irrationally. Gambling can lead a person to steal from their own mother to gamble more. I knew a man who had to go with his wife to betting shops within a 50-meter radius of his house 
to ask them not to let him in if he showed up. It is not just a personal struggle. It affects families, friends, and entire communities. The allure of getting rich quickly, the thrill of taking risks, can blind an individual to the value of what they already have. Financial ruin is a common outcome, but the emotional and relational cost is even more devastating. It breaks trust within families, strains relationships to the breaking point, and can leave lasting scars on children who witness the chaos. The irony is that the more someone loses, the more desperate they become to win it all back, creating a vicious cycle that is hard to break. Is this the sin? Substance addiction? Substance addiction is a terrible vice. It is a sin that can drive you away from home, make you lose everyone around you, and make you do anything for the next fix. And when I say anything, I mean anything. This addiction not only harms the individual, but spreads throughout their life, affecting every relationship and opportunity. It is a sin that consumes not only the body, but also the mind and soul, leading someone down a path of destruction and despair. It destroys the body, can turn people into real zombies, and the pursuit of the next fix becomes an unrelenting impulse that overshadows everything else, often leading to dangerous and illegal activities. Families are torn apart, careers are destroyed, and the essence of the individual is eroded. For you, in your life, is the sin that easily entangles you lust. Some people listening to me now have been struggling with lust for decades. Lust is the sin that easily entangles them. They have been struggling against watching immoral videos on the internet, struggling against fornication and adultery. They are driven to do things they don't want to do because of lust. They want to stop living promiscuous lifestyles but can't say no. They don't want to touch themselves but they can't say no. They don't want to watch those impure things on the internet but they can't say no. They don't want to commit fornication but they can't say no. They don't want to commit adultery but they can't say no. However, for some people, Lust is not the sin that easily entangles them. Sin has a deceptive nature. Sin has the subtle and unnatural ability to remain dormant for years. Sin has the ability to deceive a person into thinking they have overcome that specific sin. And indeed, years can pass, even decades can pass, but that sin has not disappeared. It is waiting, waiting for the right circumstances to align. Sin is patient. That is the deceptive nature of sin. It will lull you into a false sense of security, a false sense of security that you do not need to be so diligent in protecting yourself against that specific sin. As time passes, you start to let your guard down and believe you have overcome that sin. Years can pass, decades can pass, and when the circumstances align, the lust that was dormant for years can strike again with full force. This is the deceptive nature of lust, it can hide from you and make you believe you don't need to protect yourself against it. But it can take away your family, make you regret your decisions, destroy your health, steal your wealth, and take away your peace of mind. Lust and anger will dictate your decisions, and I have witnessed their destructive power for decades in ministry. Uncontrolled lust can lead a person to places they never wanted to go, and they can wonder how they ended up in such a low place. Lust can even lead people to make promises they can't keep and spend all their money, leaving them in tears, divorced, and in financial ruin. For you, in your life, is this sin anger? Are you someone who struggles with anger, always on the verge of exploding? Uncontrolled anger can cause a chain reaction of destruction. A word spoken in anger can cause lasting pain, and actions taken in the heat of anger can have irreparable consequences. Anger can lead to a spiral of regret and guilt, as actions taken in moments of fury are often irrevocable. Anger can destroy long-standing relationships, causing a rift between friends, family, and colleagues. Anger can make you say words you can never take back, causing deep emotional scars. It can make you become a bitter person, always waiting for an opportunity to release your anger. Anger can control your life, determining your daily actions and decisions. And yet some people may not struggle with anger. Each of us has a sin that easily entangles us. For some people, it is greed. Greed is a sin that can make us betray those we love, compromise our integrity, and seek wealth above all else. Greed can make us forget that our true wealth is in God. It can make us pursue material things at any cost, forgetting that our true reward is in heaven. 
Greed can destroy our lives, draw us away from God, and leave us spiritually impoverished. For others, it may be laziness. Laziness can prevent us from realizing our true potential, make us waste our lives, and leave us dissatisfied and unfulfilled. Laziness can make us neglect our responsibilities, both to God and to others. It can make us waste the opportunities God has given us and leave us spiritually weak. Regardless of what the sin that easily entangles us is, God calls us to lay it aside. He calls us to repent, to turn to Him, and to seek His help in overcoming these sins. He calls us to run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He calls us to trust Him to give us the strength to resist temptation and to live a life that pleases Him. So, what is the sin that easily entangles you? Identify it, confess it to God, and ask Him to help you overcome it. God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is powerful to give us victory over any sin that easily entangles us. May we live lives that glorify God, running with perseverance the race marked out for us, always fixing our eyes on Jesus.